All right, this is about uh, humvees. We're going to use this as a representative model. It's to scale more or less, uh, about a tenth of one tenth uh, scale. And the reason we're doing this is because Humvees drive over bombs, and uh, when they drive over bombs, bad things happen. So we're going to try to identify the miscellaneous things that we can or cannot do to uh, minimize the damage that uh, a bomb can inflict. So we look at the vehicle itself. It's three basic parts. You know, with uh, with the uh, uh, people on the inside here, everybody understands that. And what we can do is create. There's 16 inches of room between the ground and and the bottom of the vehicle, more or less. 16 inches is uh, not necessary in most situations, so we're going to take a little bit of that room six to eight inches of that room and create a, a shock absorbing uh, a hydraulic method of, uh, of absorbing shock uh, so that uh, it, it uh, deflects some of the force and then we're going to incorporate uh, uh, flumes through the through the middle of the truck itself and they'll come out the rope and that will direct more force through the vehicle instead of just simply underneath the floor of the vehicle. And then we're going to uh, cut the back end and the front end somewhat loose so that we can uh, uh, allow the vehicle or the, the component that holds the, back, the passengers, we're going to allow it to rise and absorb some of the uh, energy that way. So this is about three basic principles that, uh, that can be incorporated into this vehicle and, uh, and will then help in, uh, in uh, uh, survivability of bombs that would be placed in their path. For the purpose of, uh, this is about the Humvee again, for the purpose of, uh, of uh, absorbing the energy from an explosion underneath the vehicle. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, we want to use hydraulics. So we're going to take a can like this, and I'm going to put a little bit of water in it. But the can is actually three-fourths full or so. A water, it can be food or anything like that. And it's enclosed. And so when a force comes up from the bottom, as long as the, uh, the pan of the Humvee can, can resist it, this will crush down and the fluid inside being non-compressible will cause the can to erupt so that the liquid come, can come out. And to alleviate some weight, which is particularly important, we're going to put it inside another can and lock it in there and that way when the, the smaller can crushes and, uh, and the fluid comes out, the bigger can holds the fluid until it actually compresses up and uh, the force of the fluid trying to get out actually erupts that can. And you can even put it into a third can. So, so that's the basic first method of shock absorption. It's hydraulic and it uses a, uh, the corrugations here are probably necessary so that we get the right deformation of the can, each can, so that uh, uh, instead of becoming little little shards that go here and there, we want it to, to, to collapse onto itself. But the right kinds of pressures that are designed by whether or not whatever the, the Humvee itself can tolerate. In actual practice, we're going to look at this. This is just straws. They're supposed to represent little cans, which is, you know, the most I'm going to do for this project. And they're stuck in, in caulk. But nonetheless, each one of these is supposed to represent a little can, like we were discussing with these. It's only bigger, of course. And the little cans go on to the bottom of the Humvee. 
like this. They take up about a half an inch of room. Well, well, they take up six to eight inches worth of room, and they will collapse up to uh, to where it's uh, you know completely enclosed. And the bottom pan will help with some of the energy deflection. These are held on with actually with straps, so that you come along, you can you can disconnect them from the inside of the vehicle, drop the pan down, and simply drive over the top of it. That would be the the method of, uh, of, of use that would be, you know, constant with what we want. So, that's the first method of shock absorption. We want to also get rid of the energy as fast as absolutely possible. An explosive energy comes instantaneously, it's very, very large, and the only way you can dissipate that is to let it go on through. So now I'm going to drill some holes in the top of here and show you what that looks like. Those. So we're putting pipes through the center of the, of the vehicle. We're just going to call this a pipe. And it's going to sit in between the soldier's legs because it has to go somewhere. And it's going to be uh, uh, undone from the inside of the vehicle so you can take it out and put it to the side if you're in an area which just doesn't need this kind of protection. And if you do, it will, it will detach from the inside and you will raise it up and through the roof. And, you know, you can create a little cradle on top of the roof to hold these pipes. So that they are out of your way if you need the room. Or just simply want the room. So I'm going to uh, figure that there can be six people in the vehicle and even the driver gets one because the driver needs to be able to uh, to have some protection too but the driver is going to have to uh, to have a, a closed circuit TV or something so that uh, so that instead of you know actually viewing the pavement in front of him he needs a camera in the front and a little viewing screen back so they can reach around the pipe basically and watch the screen about where he's going Either that or you can leave the driver, you know, on his own, which wouldn't be very friendly to the driver. Either that or you can put, uh, you know, uh, two smaller pipes to each side and he fits in between them or whatever it is you think you need to do. So I'm going to, to uh, uh, put these pipes in place and show you what that's like. This is the bottom or the place where the shock absorbing materials are. And the pipes sit in between those shock absorbing materials, each one of them. There will be, in this case, six of them. We'll show you what that is here in just a bit. All right, now we have our Humvee with a bottom shock absorption plate on it, just taped to it so that it can come off. It has whatever ground clearance is absolutely necessary and not a lot more. And then it has these these pipes in the top of it, which cause when when a force is uh, applied here, they will actually go through the bottom plate uh, uh, all the way down. Forgot to do that. Anyway, you'll have to use your imagination for that. So there are holes that go all the way into the bottom, and there are pipes that go all the way through the roof. That directs any explosive forces directly through the pipes and out the top of the vehicle, leaving the uh, the plate that the feet of the military people are on somewhat more intact. Now the hydraulic shock absorptions that are you know the cans that I showed you that collapse and and, uh, and absorb energy that way. In the first place, those cans, when, when each can erupts, that takes an amount of energy and it actually produces a sideways shock to absorb some more of the energy. And then the next can that, that erupts produces another sideways uh, uh, force. And if you have three cans, that produces another sideways force. And then, of course, as the whole pan collapses to the bottom of it, more uh, velocity of force comes out through the sides. So anyway, the pipes 
can just simply go up through the through the roof as, as the bottom is pushed up. Those can those pipes go up with it, or you can make it so that uh, they're more stable. But but you have to uh, uh, it takes more structure, and then there are, there are more problems. So so that's the second means. So we have hydraulic means to uh, dissipate some of the force and leave the, the bottom floor intact. We have we have the pipes here to uh, uh, let the force go through, and they don't have to be terribly strong if you uh, if you put you know Kevlar or you know the appropriate material uh, inside the pipes or you know you can uh, uh, use your own decision if you think Kevlar is good enough you can just put the Kevlar as pipes as you know a cloth material that goes through the through the roof and, and you know you're done that way but the problem with that is when an explosion or that force is going through the Kevlar material, the, the little round uh, tube that the cloth will make, that that force is going to provide a, an immediate outward impact and if you are anywhere close to it, it will get you. And it can, you know, if not damage, you know, not tear off an arm or, or, or something, it will it will damage you. It's better than not having anything at all, but you have to keep your distance from it. And it has to be relatively tight. So it doesn't have to be a structural pipe. You know, you can, you can make it another way. As far as the driver goes, the Kevlar material might be the best option. That way you can sew it together. You know, sew a line across it to, to uh, collapse it to the point where he can see around it. And then the sewing uh, 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 comes apart when the force goes through it, and and it shapes the the tube. But uh, you know you might want to put some kind of uh, leg restraints so that your your legs cannot go too close to that Kevlar pipe. You know you want to keep your distance from it, or it will injure you badly because that's what you know force does. Uh, you know, it just depends on the size of the bomb, really. So, that's it for the second part of what you can do to minimize the damage to a vehicle. Alright, this is our Humvee with the hydraulic shock uh, uh, dispensers, you might call them. You know, food cans, basically. One with the liquid in it and the rest not, but you understand. These are the structural pipes that allow uh, the force of the explosion to come up through the bottom and exit out the top. And if you you can make them structural, you know by by making a, a suitable pin or something into the roof, and that way uh, you know the roof helps to hold the floor down. If they're going to be structural pipes, if they're going to be Kevlar, of course, that doesn't work. But, you know, if you actually, uh, uh, if you actually taper the Kevlar tube up to the top, that will, uh, that will cause the explosion to, to come out in kind of like a funnel. And that funnel will, will absorb some of the, well not, will, will resist some of the force going through because it has to funnel through the smaller opening at the top. And that transfers energy or that transfers force through the, through the, the socket or you know, the sock itself down into the floor to hold back some of the force that's coming through it. If you understood that. It actually does, does work, but you have to again, you know, create some kind of a, a border for feet to uh, don't get in in any closer than this feet or legs you know you have to you have to have some kind of padding on it on a structural pipe so that you know if the legs are touching which they will be at times so you have to have padding on it to absorb that that initial extreme shock or or it will you know not help you nearly as much so this is the third method and the third method is by creating a, uh, it doesn't have to be a hinge, just a support that can be, uh, uh, can come apart here. You know, you put just a little, a little uh, bracket on top of some sort, 
can even be a pin from the bottom, but that's irrelevant. Anyway, these are attached, and then you can see when an explosion occurs, what happens is that the, the passenger compartment goes up. The force of the explosion goes up, and by bringing the front and the back down, you create much more room for it. You know, and that literally uh, uh, eliminates the weight of the front and the back off of the uh, off of the compartment itself. You know, off from the from the force uh, lifting that too. You know, if you can remove the weight, then the then the whole package goes up, and if the whole package goes up. Then of course uh, there's less force against it, less less intense force against it. So these are the three primary, certainly methods of, uh, of making a Humvee safer for the occupants inside. And of course, like I said, structural pipes can be taken out from the inside. You know, if you find yourself in a situation that needs that. Just you can either let them roll off the top and go back later, or you can attach them to the to uh, you know a chain or something so they sort of stay there or a border around the top or something, you know whatever it is that you think you want to do. So the next part of that is how to identify the person who is in fact uh, uh, operating the switch on the explosion. All right, we're going to target a Humvee, and that's important because you want to know where to find the bomber. So, as we take a look here, we have to have a, a, you know, a sight reading. We have to have something to reference our target with. That little dish rag up there is supposed to be your mountain in the distance an individual peak or something like that and when you uh, you uh, there is an explosion that's how you find the person you go where the bomb blew up and you look perpendicular to that in nearly every time or almost perpendicular you find the most recognizable peak and then you uh, go back on the other side and the bomber will be over there because he's got to have some kind of target reference or he cannot determine where the bomb is on the road. He has to have uh, you know, a reference so that he knows where and when to assign it. So we have a, this is a little red spot there is the target. So we're uh, lined up right now with the target even though you can't see it. And, you know, people are going to be a thousand, two thousand feet away. So here is the Humvee. And we know that the Humvee does not align with our target, uh, you know, our obstacle there. So when it lines up, that's where the explosion goes. So let's just line it up. So the Humvee is now directly centered with our uh, reference point and if you're a bomber that's when you're going to uh, to ignite that bomb. If you're a military convoy for instance your reference is you know he, he can't really uh, reference it from the side you know he's got to be looking at the target obstacle up there that dishwasher dish rag has got to be looking at that something between so the Humvee needs to be between that and the obstacle the target he's looking at so you turn around from a, a bomb that went off and if you're looking in the distance that's where he was sitting from this target across that bomb crater and there he is. So, uh, you know, you can go find him. 
All right, the last thing we're going to discuss is uh, detecting the bomb. So you can have a little mechanized uh, little wagon, and this is just a block of wood. I'm not bothering with the wheels and what have you. Pushed in front of the Humvee. It actually would be a, a, a little device that's powered by itself, most likely. So that, you know, with the appropriate uh, uh, tie back to the Humvee to control it. So it goes around the corners, up and down, what have you, without any real problem. And you can get rid of it if you want to without too much trouble. So, the uh, the thing with a, uh, a little vehicle in front of the Humvee, you can put uh, metal detectors and uh, all types of things in that in that little box. And then you can, you know, give yourself a warning before you get there that this is a problem. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, connected to the Humvee necessarily. It can be tied to it. Well, it sort of has to be. Uh, it, well, you can figure that out. You can also fly something ahead of you so that you can see, uh, you know, the ground disturbed or, or things like that that's coming up that looks different. But primarily, the most effective means of uh, keeping out of trouble is to put a metal detector up there right on top of the road you know searching uh, as as well as you can uh, you know with little little arms on the side so that it picks up whatever there is to pick up and gives you a beep or whatever it is you want and you drive it from inside the Humvee if you need to get rid of it you turn it all the way to the side and and actually the arm will just pop off the Humvee and and uh, you'll have to maybe drive over it, but that isn't a real problem. So, uh, you know, if you have to get rid of it. So, like I say, you can, you can fly one instead, but, but that's not going to give you a metal detector. Put wheels on that little thing up there, put a metal detector, a good strong one, put something that can... Uh, 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 cause the cell phone, uh, you know, whatever they're trying to, the cell phone to, to fry itself or whatever it is you can think of. 